May I come in, ma'am? Yes, please. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Come and sit down. Thank you, ma'am. So you're from MP? Yes, ma'am. And your first preference is IAS? Yes, ma'am. If you don't get it, it's IPS? Yes, ma'am. What attracts you to IPS? Ma'am, the first thing is the management of law and order. That attracts me. And second, to see the issues of dealing with the issues related to like violence of women and solve them at the first place. I will have the direct rule to investigate and see <coughs> it. So that attracts me for IPS. But law and order uh, is, is quite a tough job, and especially for a woman. But uh, suppose you were faced with a mob, and then now mobs are becoming more and more common. So what would you be your first action? You are suddenly called upon and you are facing a big mob. So what will be your first action? Ma'am, first thing I would like to know the reason for which the mob has been protesting or why they have gathered right. at the first place. Right. Uh, second thing, I will try to engage in a conversation on a dialogue with them to know the root cause or why they are protesting and if needs arises, I will use the force to maintain law and order so that the social harmony uh, is not disturbed in the area. And suppose, would you not try to find out who the leaders of that thing are or would you just talk to the mob over the no, over the mic TV? No, I would. Speakers. Uh, I, firstly, I would engage with the leaders because it is not possible to engage with a whole mob at the same time. Hmm. It is the leaders who should convey me what are their issues, why they are protesting. So I think first I will engage with the leaders because they are representative of the, the mob. So with the leaders I would engage first. And try to understand the thing. Yes ma'am. All right. In spite of that, they don't listen to you. They are continuing to throw stones, continuing to set fires. Then what will your action be? I would go with the rule of law and the statute, the provisions that are provided for me to maintain law and order. If needs arises, I will use the force. So what is the what is the law statute? I mean, what will you do in terms of that? Well, firstly, the elements that are causing the violence first, I would arrest them so that uh, harmony can be created. And I, I can be able to talk to those who want peace at the first place and a healthy dialogue. So the uh, anti-social elements, I will first try to arrest them. Will you promulgate any law or anything? Um, I think uh, as an IPS, I am not authorized to promulgate any law. At the moment, I mean, so what will you do? Do you reach out to your superior? Do you reach out to the DM? What will you do? And at what point will you, if it is in, out, totally out of control, at what point will you call the army? And will you call the army or who is authorized to call the army? Ma'am, as for my knowledge, I think uh, I am not authorized. I will inform my superiors and the executive, political executive, I think they are responsible to call the army. In political the executive? Yes, ma'am, home, uh, state home minister. Actually, it is the DM who has the powers to decide and call upon. Okay. Political executive doesn't come into this at this point. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. It's okay. Uh, you'll learn. So, so you will consult with your superior, immediate superior. Yes, ma'am. And then you will decide on the course of action. Firstly, I will try to handle the situation by myself. Hmm. But if it uh, goes out of hand, then I have to consult my superiors in taking further actions. Okay. All right. Um, going along a little further along the same track, what are the main problems facing the judiciary today? <coughs> Ma'am, first thing is the pendency of cases that are rising in all the three levels of judiciary. Hmm. Second is the judicial appointments hmm. are not taking place. They are delayed. 
And third, ma'am. Why? Why do you think there is delay in the judicial appointments? From the lack of balance and consultation between the government and the judiciary is the first thing, and second, the collegium system is one one thing, and there are not definite timelines that are timeline to appoint the judges when the collegium recommends to the government. They're not. What is the problem with the collegium? Why is the government and the judiciary not seeing eye to eye with the about the collegium? Ma'am, first thing, it uh, it's opaque procedure because there are no fixed uh, qualification on what basis collegium is recommending appointment of judges. First thing is that, and second, the government is uh, is saying that in collegium system, judges are appointing judges. So there is a conflict of interest that arises. There should be say of some uh, outside person like professionals or civil society organization so that a holistic and inclusive approach can be taken so that more faith is generated in judiciary. So those are the issues right now. Now, the judiciary wants the collegium. Government wants the judicial commission. So, what is the problem with it? Why is judiciary not willing to have a judicial commission, national judicial commission? Ma'am, judiciary is of the view that uh, by national judicial commission, independence of the judiciary will be undermined, and it will be forced to toe the line of the government and their independent functioning and decisions, which can go against the government. That should not be taken, and they are guided by some prejudices. So that's why they are not. Okay with the National Judicial Commission, but they even if it is com comprising civil society activists and uh, professionals <laughs> from the corporate world or a, a sort of a differentiated set of people, even then there is likely to be a danger of packing government nominees. Yes, ma'am, because uh, those people, those extra people, those are appointed. They will be appointed by the government. So the judiciary is of the view that they will not uh, be totally you know, independent and rational in their perspective. So that's why judiciary has that in mind. So that they are not supporting the National Judicial Commission right now. So what, what do you think? This is one view is government, one view is judiciary. What is your own opinion about what would be the most suitable way out? My, in my opinion, with uh, our country and everything, for judicial independence also, a judicial commission should be set up. Mm. But uh, its procedure and the appointment qualifications should be given by the parliament and not led to the delegation or delegated to the executive first, so that a rational qualification can be provided for the civil society activists who should mm. be appointed to the panel. And my second thing, the memorandum of procedure that, are, that is there right now, it should be updated so that a fixed timeline can be provided for the government to appoint the judges. And if they are not appointing, they should convey the reasons to the judiciary that why they are not appointing and what are their concerns regarding the, it. So is there any room for the judiciary to, with the judicial commission, will there be any room for the judiciary to uh, express its views on the on the composition of the judicial commission. Ma'am, judiciary is one of the stakeholders in judicial commission, so they will have some views on the qualification provided for the appointments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Your optional is sociology. Yes, sir. Today, I saw that caste census is going to start in Bihar. It persons like you. 21st century, as soon as you see this news, what is your reaction? So I believe caste senses are important because to know the what are different to enumerate the caste and know their socio-economic conditions so that a better policy making and implementation can take place. So I think because if reservations and all the benefits are provided, they are sometimes cornered by the rich and in the class domain. So I think to know the root causes and their qualification, I think caste census is important. SC, ST is already known. OBC also already known. Where is the need for going further? You are starting with that caste census is very important. Is there in the worldwide, 
is such any of such system is there so and the the thrust of constitution we should annihilate castes not to revive that what is your opinion for that so first thing in world if we are there no such case but i think caste is also a unique concept related to india okay. how to uh, eliminate it now your 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 recommendations so caste elimination yes from our society so i think caste elimination is not required i think the discrimination and inequality that is prevailing among various caste that should be the primary concern for all the stakeholders including <coughs> government and civil society and the general public in that, in that sense so i think annihilation and also constitution sir doesn't provide for annihilation of caste it provides for the equality and end of the disc uh, discrimination no. in direct to principles there is no such mention so in direct to principle it is mentioned to provide for the socio economic to uplift the caste and provide for the socio economic betterment okay, of another caste. news of today newspaper is something is some gathering is likely to in the madhya pradesh on some important issue there is even pravasi nri pravasi bhar so here it is going to be sorry sir i am not able oh, in indore okay sir thank but you sir. what are their problems of nri they are asking for the dual citizenship what is your opinion why we should not allow they feel that we are emotionally attached with our country and this country is denying this should it be allowed so uh, dual citizenship is uh, in our constitution it is not allowed and for that to uh, i think for dual citizenship will lead to division of the interest uh, in that sense so i think uh, okay just my last question uh, you are interested in walking exercise etc <coughs> what is gandhi and ravinna tagore opinion on sports activities etc sorry sir i am not physical exercise gandhi says ki no this poor country anyway sir uh, swati you. you are coming from a place jabalpur a very interesting word dhanvantari nagar yes sir what is dhanvantari why it is called dhanvantari nagar so why the dhanvantari nagar who was dhanvantari sir dhanvantari is regarded as the god of ayurveda okay and uh, he is believed that during the samudra manthan exercise he emerged from the sea with the elixir of immortality hmm. so he is uh, regarded as a national ayurveda day is celebrated on dhanteras and he is worshiped in that but i heard that there are only four vedas from where this another veda has come ayurveda is it a veda or it is something else sir ayurveda is not a particular veda but it is knowledge of life and longevity where procedures like for meditation yoga and various special diets and herbal medicines are provided to prevent disease and treat disease also and live a healthy and fruitful life you like to see films which film you have seen last so last year i have seen dushim 2 and rrr rrr now why do you think that the era of going to watch a movie in movie theater it is now slowly vanishing what can be the reason behind so first thing is the emergence of the ott platforms what is that so ott are the over the top platform which okay. provide on demand audio and video content hmm. over the internet hmm. and it is also more affordable for the people uh, to access that and we can access from the comfort of our, our home hmm. so in that sense uh, ott platforms has revol revolutionized the sector and the theater going is reduced and second thing sir pricing of tickets in theater has risen so that is also preventing people especially from the middle income groups to go there and watch movies there was a news about samed sikhar have you read that it is a place of uh, religious importance to jains there is a movement going on oh yes sir what is that so it is a i am forgetting the hmm. name of that place hmm. but the government is uh, developing what the issue behind uh, 
So the government is, has proposed to develop it as a tourist destination, but the community is opposing because it will lead to the, the if it is you know, destined to its destination, that their faith uh, is compromised and the place is prone to that uh, pollution and various communities will reach it. So it's again their faith and culture, so that's why they are opposing it. Now, do you think that in coming days, this is going to be a big issue? I went to Tirupati, down below the hill, there are everything is available, wine, meat, and above that, we have a very famous Hindu shrine, okay? But this issue where a tourism facility has been contradicted with the religious sentiment, is it going to be a bigger issue in coming days? So I do think that it will emerge to be a bigger issue if not resolved right now. Because uh, in our country where it's multi-religious, with the development we have should be we should balance the interest and the concerns of the people so that harmony is created and no uh, protest or thing the sentiments of the public is not hurt in the development process. A harmony is there between development and religious culture. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so the yes. Uh, you, you are the student of computer science. Yes, sir. Okay. Nowadays, government is uh, giving emphasis on quantum computation, quantum computer. What do you know about this? What is this quantum computer? So, quantum computing is basically dealing with computational problems and mm -hmm. algorithms by using quantum physics uh, at its core, using atomic and subatomic particles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, quantum computing is that. It will lead to faster processing. And How it is faster than the uh, normal computer? So it deals at the subatomic atomic level with various features of like superimposition and entanglement. Mm -hmm. So that will lead for faster processing and for secure communication. How it is? How it leads to faster processing? So, for example, like with superimposition, a particle can be. Uh, in two states like one or zero at the same time. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, computational can be faster. Okay, fine. Uh -huh. All this is fine introduction of things, but if the people have to work those machines or uh, equipment or it, and they are not working and they are short staffed, every department you go to, they say we are short staffed. And the work, you know, files are piled up. If you go to any office, you see these files. So, how do we overcome this? Even if we have, you know, all these other things, AI, this, that and the other. How will you solve this problem of the human being not working? Well, I think skill enhancement is the first thing that we should do before introducing the technology. We should build a human capital, human resource in the sector. And second thing is updating the curriculum at the higher education institution is necessary because then uh, we should include because some institutions still don't have AI or IoT or for quantum computing in their syllabuses. They are still following the rote learning concept. So I think uh, the curriculum should be updated in that sense so that the human resource will be created and those will be able to manage the emerging technology in a better way. Here it's a question of motivation, human motivation. People don't want to work. Or they say that the, the amount of work that is there is too much for us. We are not able to do it. So human motivation, what will you do? And performance linked incentive can be provided to boost their morale so that they participate in more. Okay. Thank you ma'am. Okay. Um, what is the role of ICT in agriculture? Nowadays, people are talking of uh, promoting ICT application in agriculture. What are those rules? So, first thing is uh, better information regarding the weather forecasting. Okay. In, uh, so second thing is the use of drones, as government has also announced the Kisan drones mm -hmm. for crop. The for what purpose? So for crop assessment and uh, soil assessment purpose also, mm -hmm. for 
uh, in that drones and second sir iot can also be leveraged mm -hmm. uh, smart irrigation techniques can be leveraged with this farmers can ha handle the irrigation pumps mm -hmm. from the mobile phones mm -hmm. so third is this What do you know about precision agriculture? So precision agriculture is uh, to promote the water use efficiency in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So that the minimum water can be used for the maximum area. So water use efficiency is generated and the prevalent uh, ex uh, groundwater extraction that is the main issue of agriculture sector right now that can be reduced. Which country in the world leading this uh, water conservation? technology sorry sir i am not aware of it okay fine <coughs> okay Thank sweta you, uh, swati okay yes, yes. Um, what was uh, india's uh, rank in global hunger index and what is the controversy associated with that so india ranked at 107 among 121 countries in global hunger index index and controversy regarding government is not satisfied with the ranking and they have doubted the procedure through which the what ranking. what procedure what have they responded so they have said that it is not holistic and have not uh, been inclusive but it tell is me based this on global the hunger index has been in the this ranking has been done since 2010 11 or even earlier but why so late response on about the method or other thing so our ranking has been reducing from the past 2 3 years okay. so that has prompted okay. the government to what change to has been brought in the national food security act and also regarding food grain garib kalyan yojana so recently pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana Uh, has been discontinued hmm. and the government has announced that for these 12 months starting from 1st january 2023 hmm. uh, the uh, entitlements and the national food security act would be allotted for free for the 81 crores approx people so so how do you reconcile this on one side we say that freebie culture has ruined the country okay and on the other hand we are giving free free grain So I believe that free grain is crucial for the food security and nutritional security of the country. So also it is crucial for the human resource development that is there. And so there is a poverty. But global hunger index says that you are not doing enough on nutrition, and food is not nutrition. Yes, sir. So. So there there are some changes that are required in National Food Security Act also. So, so what are non food grain uh, in uh, national food security act there are entitlements and which are not food grain only in the nfsa are you aware sorry sir i am unable to recall okay um, <clears throat> do you think uh, there is lot of chaos and turmoil in our neighborhood particularly western neighborhood okay Now, do you think that fire may reach our borders or even within our within the country? Uh, yes, sir, I do believe that. Uh, so, can you can you give example? Why do you think this is possible? Uh, so, first thing I with Western neighbors, I will say of, of what happening in Afghanistan with the Taliban takeover, the terrorism. Uh, activities and the militancy can rise uh, in india and also with pakistan there are certain political economic issues that are there so to divert the attention of the masses they can engage in uh, so what in changes you will suggest in policy or law or in the in within the country so that we create a firewall that that kind of thing doesn't invade or doesn't come within the country So first thing is uh, increasing the surveillance at the border to prevent any intrusion and anti-national activities. So second is engaging in a constructive dialogue with Pakistan, which is very necessary. 
in that and third also in a constructive dialogue and diplomatic level with the Taliban to, cons uh, to convey India's interest and the concerns that it had, uh, especially with terrorism and the human rights issue that Taliban policies are creating, that should be conveyed so that the principles of Doha Pact that Taliban has signed with the okay. US should be respected. What is the last question? What is the difference between fifth and sixth schedule areas? So, fifth and sixth schedule areas are basically to provide a protection and to preserve the culture of the tribes. Ah, but I but wanted fifth, the difference. So, fifth schedule area include the areas only in the ten mm -hmm. states, uh, with uh, and the sixth and the four is applicable to fourth northeastern states of Assam, Miz Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura. Nagaland. Oh yes, sir. There and with sixth schedule areas, there are more power. And more autonomy. More power means what? So they also have the judicial power in to resolve the conflicts in their area, which are not available with the fifth schedule areas, and they are more autonomous in their functioning. What does it mean, more autonomous? So with fifth schedule okay. area, there is a tribal advisory council where okay. sixteen members are from. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.